Right guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. I'm going to be unusually blunt here. The new crime and punishment system is a complex mess. That is my opinion of course and your opinion will no doubt vary, but there it is. The new mechanics have caused a whole variety of problems for players of all types right across the board. For example, if you plan on flying in a ship with an extremely short jump range, you better take care where you commit a crime even an accidental 200 credit value crime. Now that is far from the only problem, so please bear with me on this and hear me out until I move on to the next point, but for now I do want to elaborate on this particular example. As a part of the rules, and this I feel is quite a good rule, if you commit a crime within the game, you'll find you have blocked access to outfitting and shipyards as well as a whole bunch of other services. The problem with this comes when there's no interstellar factor in your system. It means you'll need to travel, it's not a problem in itself, but you'll need to go to another star system in order to get these blocked services restored. However, if you have a ship with an underpowered FSD, chances are you will be unable to leave the system, and as you'll also be unable to access the blocked services such as outfitting and shipyards, it means that you cannot change a ship and you cannot change any of your modules. In short then, you'll be completely stuck. This leaves you with two choices. The first is to self-destruct and choose a free sidewinder. The second is to be willingly killed by a player or an NPC so that you end up being respawned at the detention facility. Now it's obvious that the fitting of an underspecced FSD is not a crime and punishing such actions was never the objective of the crime and punishment system. It also seems obvious to me that the multi-layered rule set for hot modules and hot ships is an inconvenience to all players. It turns out that hot ships and hot modules do not only punish the hardest of criminals, but rather they punish all criminal infractions, no matter how minor. It's really not a stretch to say then that it seems the game has lost sight of what the crime and punishment rules originally set out to achieve. In short, the letter of the rules have defeated the spirit of the rules. But what was really the original intention of crime and punishment? Were these rules ever actually intended to punish criminal actions against players and limit griefing tactics, or was the entire point instead, right from the beginning, to overlay a new blanket rule set that all players have to follow, a new system so in depth that it will touch upon nearly every aspect of the game and then directly affect every player, regardless of whether they are PvP focused or PvE focused. Well, as a somewhat answer to this, Frontier have stated numerous times that these new systems are merely the first steps towards a fleshed out criminal gameplay that is to arrive at a later date, and further, that they wanted a robust punishment system in place before they added any potential future gameplay. So the principle there is certainly a well-intended one, but it still leaves us with the current system, and one which Frontier's mission statement for Crime and Punishment said, Essentially, the new crime and punishment system will add appropriate consequences for criminal activity, make the crime system more legible and easier to understand, there will be new rules for bounties and fines, and new rules for spawning after ship destruction. But some weeks after the release of the new system, is that really where we are at? Is a new system legible and easy to understand, and does it really have appropriate consequences for criminal activity? Well. Murder is perhaps the ultimate crime within the game. The consequence is a high bounty and death. Smuggling is also seen as a serious crime, the consequence of which is a high fine or a bounty and potentially death, depending upon the cargo you're carrying. And of course, we all know that loitering is punishable by death. These rules make sense, even if the punishments are harsh in some cases, but the player knows what to expect. Firstly, because murder and smuggling are obvious criminal actions, and we don't need the game to tell us that. We also know loitering is seen as a serious crime because the game does repeatedly tell us that. However, beyond that, there are two key issues. First, not all crimes are intended, and some are so minor that it's a surprise that they are a crime. And second, the consequences for a crime are unclear, and in some cases they seem to be hidden. So what are unintended or minor crimes? Well, there's a lot of these and a lot of people have been affected by them in multiple ways, but here's a couple of examples. One popular minor unintended crime is getting a bounty for friendly fire. Yes, a player can avoid this, but it does sometimes happen regardless of how careful you are. Another is getting bounty for unintended murder. 
An example of this, a friend of mine recently had an unwanted ship stray into the line of fire of his NPC-controlled fighter. So this wasn't his own doing, it wasn't from his own trigger or his own ship, and this earned him an assault fine. The unwanted ship was then killed by a third party, which for some reason earned my friend a murder bounty, which in turn increased his notoriety. And this isn't an isolated case, the same thing has happened on many occasions, sometimes it happens in wings, and sometimes from the NPC, or just sometimes it happens from a misfire or friendly fire. But anyway, players are then finding themselves committing crimes either without any direct involvement, or by complete accident. Truth be told, this does happen to some extent in nearly all games, but the extent to which it's now happening in Elite is very telling of its design and its implementation. So to hammer that point, players are accidentally committing crimes. Players are committing crimes without any active involvement. The game does not inform you of what a crime is until you have actually committed it. These occur due to inconsistent rules, lack of information, and a failure of in-world logic. This entire situation is then exasperated when we move on to the punishment for crimes. To an extent, crime and punishment does now have a sliding scale to create the harshness of the punishment. But in my opinion, that scale is, and perhaps has always been, completely out of balance. It also suffers from the same inconsistency and failure of in-world logic that I mentioned earlier. For example, an assault bounty would result in a 200 credit fine and a death warrant. However, if the crime is so minor that it only warrants a small 200 credit fine, then it makes no logical sense that it is also extreme enough that it also warrants a death penalty. It is either a minor crime or a major one. Logically, it should not be both at the same time. Further, the new punishment rules lead to cases like the example I mentioned in the opening of the video, players getting stuck in isolated systems with no get out option. But, even without those extreme edge cases, which are of course all too common, players of all types, no matter whether they are aggressive or passive, are still heavily inconvenienced by having to mess around with hot ships, hot modules, in addition to notoriety and interstellar factors. What makes this worse is that players are penalised to this rather excessive level from either having committed minor crimes, unintended crimes, or due to lack of available information on exactly what constitutes a crime. So once again, we face that question. What was the intent of the new crime and punishment system? Was it implemented to make the game more fair and balanced for PvP, as well as to offer consequences for the separate issue of griefing? Was it, as Frontier stated, to introduce a system that is legible and easier to understand? Unfortunately, it has failed on all those points. What it has achieved, however, is potentially something far greater. It now offers the potential to make the game world feel more alive, as it adds to a world where all actions right across the board have a long-lasting repercussion for the player. However, for now at least, this is also something that the game is failing at. To me, from my perspective, and as I stated at the beginning of the video, this is just my opinion and your mileage will no doubt vary, but from my perspective, it feels that the new crime and punishment system really has lost sight of its original objective. It's no longer clear what the intention of the system actually is. It punishes players for accidental or minor crimes. It also involves huge layers of inconvenience for those same players. Frontier is certainly aware of these issues, hence the newly proposed changes to crime and punishment. But these changes are only addressing a few of the symptoms of the greater problem, and unfortunately they are not addressing the cause of the problems, some of which I have highlighted in this video. Talking of which, one thing you will certainly have noticed in this video is that I have not talked in any detail about true crime within the game. I haven't discussed the effects of player killing or piracy. I haven't talked about griefing or sealed clubbing. And the reason I haven't discussed this, well, it's really very simple. The new crime and punishment rules affect all players in exactly the same way, regardless of intent, or in some cases, even regardless of outcome. If you commit a minor or unintended crime, you're going to feel the full force of the new punishment mechanics. And if you commit murder or sealed clubbing, sure, you're going to be hit harder by notoriety, bounty and even ATR. But it really does feel as though that is a side effect of the system rather than the aim of it. And that is really very telling of where we're at, isn't it? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.